Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And if you have ever wondered about the impact of content on your marketing, on your sales, on your ability to get clients and customers, then you are not going to want to miss today's episode of the show. I want to welcome Michael T. Baker. He's from a rock star to an entrepreneur. He understands what it takes to help your business be found, liked, and trusted. He's married with two children and travels the country full time in a fifth wheel. Okay, that's an adventure in and of itself. He's the <laughs> recent winner of the most innovative digital marketing agency, advertising firm of the year, and best social media marketing agency. Michael's firm content, sorry, Perception Content Media is helping businesses across the country grow their presence online. And he was born into a musical family, spent the first six years on a tour bus. No wonder he's comfortable living in a fifth wheel. Uh, he's also got a music career on top of that. So welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me, Kim. I'm I'm very excited. And like we were talking about before, you came highly recommended by some of some mutual friends. So I'm excited to be on your show. Yeah. So it was actually Dave Albin and he was on the show. So if you want to check out that I interview, uh, you can go back and I will look it up while we were talking and I will tell you a little later which episode was Dave's. Michael. Yeah. First of all, just take a moment and introduce yourself. So as Kim said, um, my name is Michael T. Baker. I, I've, that's an, another story for another time why I, why I always have my middle initial in there. Um, but it's a, it's a nice little uh, indicator, separates me a little bit. But um, I, as she said, I spent most of my life uh, as a musician. And, uh, but then I worked for two tech companies out of Nashville. Uh, Nashville and Ohio. And while working with those tech companies running their business development, um, I also ran all of their marketing. And uh, even though that wasn't really what I was responsible for. And when uh, I left the second company, uh, I decided that what I truly loved and what I truly liked to do was marketing. And so I decided to open up my own marketing firm a little over two and a half years ago. And uh, it's we've been doing very well, and and it's been it's been a learning experience as as it is with any type of entrepreneur and, and person that starts their own business. Um, but but I really love doing what I do, and and primarily because my my main focus is for small and medium sized businesses uh, to really help them uh, when they don't have as many tools and resources. Uh, uh, available to them as a lot of large organizations that have, you know, this massive budget. I, lo I love helping the quote unquote uh, little guy so that they can succeed and compete against some of those larger businesses. Wow, that's wonderful. You know, I, I love the fact that you chose to focus on a group that doesn't necessarily always get a lot of attention. And you know, because when you think of small businesses, it's not like they've got money coming out, you know, flowing all over the place, right? <laughs> so, you know, we try to think of target markets, but I really appreciate that about you, Michael. So a couple of questions about being an entrepreneur for you. What has been the hardest part of your entrepreneurial journey so far? I think the hardest part is the um, imposter syndrome. You know, when, when you set off to be an entrepreneur and, and you're doing this, uh, it's very easy to tell yourself that you're not, this is, I'm, I'm going to fail. Uh, I'm going to be, this is not going to work and it's going to be unsuccessful. And, and there's those days where you're, you, where you feel empowered and you feel like you're going to take over the world and your business <laughs> is going to be the next Amazon or whatever it may be. Um, and then there's other days where you just want to curl up in a ball in a corner and, and have <laughs> nobody talk to you because you're just like, what What was I thinking? Uh, so the imposter syndrome, I think, is the hardest thing because if you could get out of your own head and, and, and really, uh, I think a key to that is surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with the right people 
to uh, encourage you, to mentor you, to, to teach you and all those things, then, then you can make it. But I think that's the biggest, biggest hurdle is yourself. Yeah. You know, it's funny you said that because um, in my book, Author to Authority, I have a whole chapter on networking and the different people that should be in your network. But one of the people I, I put is your comrades, right? Those people who are at the same level of business are you, who are experiencing the same thing. You know, they're the people that you go to, you know, when you're feeling the imposter syndrome, when you want to curl up in the corner, when you just want to give up. You know, but, you know, if you tell your family that you're going to give up, they'll be like, yeah, it's OK to quit because it's too hard. <laughs> and you go to your comrades and they go, seriously, bud, like they kick you in the behind and they say, come on, you got this. Keep moving forward. Don't quit. Don't give up. Yeah, this is a problem. But that's what you got us here for. Exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. So, Michael, I know you've come prepared today. Uh, to talk about, you know, marketing and content. So I'm going to let you loose to share what you've prepared and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. You, uh, you talked about it a little bit uh, in the introduction and, and what I wanted to really share with you and, and your audience today was um, what I've learned since even starting marketing myself. So when I started my firm, I was I was very much kind of a broad, uh, broad but narrow kind of thought process. In other words, if you needed a website, cool, I could build you a website. If you needed some uh, social media help, I could help you with that. But it was all very individualized. And then what I learned was that uh, a lot of businesses, uh, small, medium, and large, uh, were missing the foundational elements that they needed to make sure that they could be found online so they could rank higher. And that's before we even start talking about uh, SEO in the sense of uh, pay-per-clicks or running ads or any, any strong keyword, that type of stuff. Before we even get into that, it's foundational things that need to be done for any business. And the primary thing that I talk about a lot is you need to be able to be found liked and trusted online. And so uh, you could have, uh, I, I, I use the analogy, you could have a, the Lamborghini, the Bugatti of, of websites, but if nobody can find it, who cares? It's like have, having that type of a car, but never taking it out of the garage, right? And so, so one of the biggest things that I, that I help uh, businesses do is how to fix their listings across the internet because when somebody goes to google and they say and you can insert the business but uh coffee shop uh, a boutique store um restaurant um uh you know plumber what, whatever it may be near me or in a certain city uh google has a split second to figure out what are the best possible results to rank the highest and so in order to do that they you have to be able to be found not just on your Google business profile, and, because obviously Google is going to look at its own backyard first, right? But it's also going to go out in that split second. It's going to look at all of its buddies, Yahoo, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Chamber, uh, Brownbow. It, it's going to look at all of these sites. And if you're not listed 100% accurately, 100% the same across all of those sites, Google actually starts to bring you down in rankings. And so you have to get that fixed first. You have to make sure you're listed correctly across the internet. That will boost your rankings right out of the gate. The second thing is being, and it kind of goes together, liked and trusted, which is you have to get reviews from your customers, from your clients. You have to actively ask them to leave a review. Because once Google sees that you can be found and your information is accurate, it then looks to see if you're, you have positive reviews. And if you do have positive reviews and you have more positive reviews or are in line at least with your, your competition and they're four or five stars, then Google's going to say, not only could I find this and are they accurate, but they are liked and trusted by other customers. I'm going to 
I'm going to suggest this business as a possible based on this search query. And so that's a lot of what I help businesses do is fix that foundational level to help them become found, liked, and trusted online. And then once we do that, then we can start stepping forward and start talking about, okay, now what do we want to do about running targeted ads on either Google or Facebook or TikTok, Instagram, any of those things. But before you spend money on any of those things, take care of the basics, right? Put that before you, before you build that second story on your home, make sure the foundation is, 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 is built correctly first so that it can hold everything else that you're planning on doing. Mm. Wow. Does that make sense? Really, yeah. I never really thought about it that way, but yeah, it makes total sense. If you don't have the right foundation, it doesn't matter what ads you throw out it. Nothing's, nothing's going to happen to it. Hmm. So what would be some really practical action steps that like, say you and I were talking, what, what would be some practical steps that I could take myself to help move that gauge a little bit more towards Google friendly? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, obviously, first and foremost, if you do not have a Google business profile, uh, obviously, in order to be found on Google, you got to have a Google business profile. Uh, so create your Google business profile and make sure whatever the information is that you're going to have on there, your address, your phone number, um, website, all of those those things are exactly how you want them to be. And then from that Google business profile, what, however you enter that information, then go to your Facebook, go to your LinkedIn, go to all your social, go and find yourself. If you're not found on Bing, if you're not found on Yahoo, anything that's relevant to your business, right? So if you're, if you're a restaurant, you don't need to be found on Zillow, right? So you don't have to go out and fix it on Zillow, but if, if you're relevant to Yelp, if you're relevant to your chamber, if you're relevant to the Better Business Bureau, go create those accounts and, and make sure the information that you enter when you're creating your profile is 100% the same as you have it on your Google Business Profile. And then, so once you do that and you get all of that taken care of, now you can start moving towards that next step and requesting the reviews. Now, what if, what if you're a really small business, sort of like, you know, a consultant, a professional, say maybe a speaker or a thought leader, um, you know, obviously you can still do a Google My Business, but would some of that be different if you're not necessarily like a, a brick and mortar business, but say maybe a service base, like not service, like plumber, heat or whatever, but like a, a B2B service based business? Yeah, and there's ways you don't necessarily have to have a a physical address in the sense of wanting, like, let's say you work out of your home as a consultant or a coach. You don't necessarily want people showing up at your front door. Um, so a couple of the suggestions that I've had, because I do have clients like that, uh, there are a couple of ways to fix that so that you can have something so that you can be verified on Google. Uh, the first thing is very easy. You can create, ju just get yourself a PO box, which is very, very affordable. Um, and you can do that. The second thing is, and, and I think this is a, a really great thing to do, is every city in America at this point has shared space locations office space locations and a lot of those places can you'll they'll charge you as little as 25 50 dollars a month for that shared space location and that is now a physical address you can receive mail there and even better if you're a consultant coach and you need to you want to have like a great working space that's other than your home where you can kind of separate yourself from things that might be happening that's distracting, or if you want to do a uh, podcast and, and, and videos, you can set your own little office up with that shared space and be able to go and redo that. So that's another thing that I've been suggesting a lot. And a few of my clients have taken advantage of that advice and have done that. And it's, it's just worked out great for them. I, I know here in Canada, and at least in Ontario, um, a lot of those office places too, even if you didn't rent um, uh, like an office space, you could pay to use their address as your business address. 
and yeah. they would they would uh, collect mail for you there. Absolutely. You don't even, there's places out there, not all of them are this way. Some of them want to want you to, you know, they're going to charge you for the, for the office or the conference room type of thing. Uh, but there are a lot out there that will allow you to just use your, their address and collect mail for a small, like I said, 25, 50 bucks a month. And that's extremely affordable for somebody who wants to have a, uh, the appearance of having a physical location without having to have a physical location. So what else, Michael? What other good stuff do you have for us? <laughs> so yeah, so um, what other than that, you know, it, it, those are the main things that that my firm that we really help with is the 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 listings management, the reviews, and all of that, and helping customers do that. Um, you know, one of the other things that comes up a lot because of the age of social media these days is in regards to getting influencers and um, getting people, should you use influencers? Should I use an influencer? Should I do this for my business? And my answer to that is, is number one, evaluate your business uh, to, and ask, is your business something that you would, would need an influencer? And secondly, absolutely, 100%. But don't think of it in the sense of you have to go find some a-list or somewhere uh, an influencer as is as as small of a scale as whoever is very well connected within your own community within your own city um, if they're if they're a a, um, a good influencer there it's somebody who's popular like a news person a sports figure an announcer any of those people you, you invite them out um, invite them to be take in your in your business offer them a deal obviously to do that and ask them if i if i offer you a free meal to come to my, my restaurant if i offer you you know uh 50 off of any of the items you sell you you buy from me you know would you be willing to do a review for me and a lot of them most of the time will say yes absolutely because it helps their status as well right uh, it helps them as well and and of them being an influencer. And so I would say absolutely, 100%. And, and you use that to your advantage. Just use your own community. And then obviously, as you start to get bigger, then and other influencers start to see, well, the, then you'll start getting emails and you'll start getting the contact saying, hey, can I come review your business? And and what can I get for that? Like, yeah, Absolutely. So, so that's, that's a big thing that I think a lot of people should take advantage of. Find people who are willing to leave a review for your business in, in, as an influencer, to do a video, to do a reel uh, or anything like that. It's going to be really great because now you're capturing a whole nother audience that you never would have gotten on your own. That's so cool. So something else I was thinking of, Michael, is is content, because the title for today is Turn Your Marketing into Rockstar Content. What role does content play and how do you create that rockstar content? Yeah, so what we talk about with our, our um, clients is understanding each platform. Uh, that you're going to be putting your content out on. Um, and not every platform is perfect for, for everybody, but I also highly suggest to not shy away from platforms just because you don't think they, they're necessarily for you. Um, now, if you don't want to do any type of video, type of reels for or TikTok or anything like that, I'm going to suggest that you you figure out a way to do it because you're going to you're missing out on a, a large audience. Um, but if you don't, then obviously there's no reason to be on TikTok. If you if you're not going to do videos, there's no reason for you to be on TikTok. Um, but but really, it's it's make sure that whatever content that you're doing is mm -hmm. is focused on on that particular platform. So. Even even on LinkedIn, LinkedIn has changed so much over just the last few years that LinkedIn is a is a I love LinkedIn. I've given training specifically on how to enhance your LinkedIn. Um, but even LinkedIn, the video content is so much 
uh, it, it grabs more attention than anything else that you're going to find on LinkedIn. Um, so the, the main thing is to understand your audience and tailor that content for that. Uh, I think the other thing that's really big is don't be too o- o- over salesy. You know, o- offer tips, offer, offer advice without asking for anything in return. Offer that advice as much as possible because people are going to start latching onto that. And if they want your help, they'll reach out to you. They'll let you know. You, you, you don't you don't have to tell somebody that you're trying to sell something. Everybody's trying to sell something. So yeah. so that was that's my biggest thing. And and I help un- people understand too uh, how to how to create per- certain kind of content. It doesn't have to look like you're in a studio. Um, but there are certain things that you want to do in order to make sure that your content sticks out more than somebody else. So if somebody is scrolling, even that that split second, those first two seconds grabs their attention and makes them stop for a second and pause. And then hopefully you can grab them for at least 10, 15 seconds before they decide to swipe again and, and grab their attention and potentially turn them into a, a, a lead and a customer. That was great, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, We're going to start to shut this down here, but um, Mm -hmm. Michael, if people have enjoyed today's conversation and they want to connect with you, what are the best ways to connect? Yeah, absolutely. And I do have an offer that I want to uh, put out there for any of your uh, followers, anybody who's watching you. So, um, on my website, it's perceptioncontentmedia.com. Uh, you can reach out and press, uh, contact there and anybody that contacts me there. Um, and within the message puts the extraordinary word ninja, uh, in that and lets me know that they found me through this podcast. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer them a special deal. So if you want to see any business owners out there want to see exactly how Google and consumers view their business online, I have what's called, a, a, I've got a report that I can run. Now, this report, I typically charge $250 for it. It's worth thousands. And basically, it's very similar to, let's say you your check engine light comes on on your car, right? And you have to take it to a mechanic and they're going to hook it up to a diagnostics machine. And they're going to tell you with that report exactly what you need to fix. And that's exactly what my report does. It'll be a report that gives you exactly what you need to fix uh, for your business to correct your online presence. And anybody who does that uh, and puts the extraordinary word engine and requests that uh, through my contact page on perceptioncontactmedia.com, I'm going to do that for only $20. So $250, typically what I charge, it's worth far more than that. But like I said, I tailor everything to small businesses and understand their budget limits. Uh, but but for, for anybody that's watching you and your audience, I'm going to do it for only $20. They just need to contact me on there and I'll walk them through the process. Thank you, Michael. That's been great. Michael, I'd love to give you an opportunity for one final thought to leave the listener with. One final thought. Oh, um, I would just say, and this is just whether whether they are entrepreneurs, whether they are business owners themselves, or if they are just working for somebody else um, in, in life, is to never doubt yourself. Give yourself far more credit than what you probably are. Uh, you, everybody, uh, as they walk through life, are dealing with the same challenges. They're dealing with the same same issues, same problems that 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 you are. Trust yourself. Trust that you are you are working hard and that you can make it through any type of difficulties that you're making that you're dealing with. Thank you, Michael. That has been awesome. And if you were listening to the beginning of this episode, we talked about Dave Albin and how he has worked with Tony Robbins. And he is the head of firewalking. So if you want to find out more about that, go to episode 404. And uh, if you're on YouTube, it'll be there, be on this side or that side. Not sure yet where I (laughs) decide I have to point to. 
Uh, but you can click on the video right there and listen to Dave Alban talk about firewalking. So this has been Michael T. Baker and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you on the very next episode. Bye now. Thank you.